look at me. I said, look at me, Gina. You can see. A little. For how long? Uh, only an hour. I, I was going to tell you as soon as I was sure. You don't get your eyesight back in an hour, Gina. It happens gradually. Light perception first, then images. This must have been going on for weeks. That's why you didn't want me to examine you, isn't it? I didn't know if it would last. Stop lying! I heard the way Keith was talking to you, like it's been a little in-joke between the two no, of you. No, it was nothing Tell like me that. the truth, Gina! Why have you been lying to me? Why have you been keeping this from me? Mom, uh, how are you going to tell Dad that you just gave Brandon away to Gina? I didn't give Brandon away. I gave Brandon back to his mother. Come on, Mom. You know this family does not see eye to eye about anything. And the only fa thing this family agrees on is that Gina is not fit to raise a kid. People change, Ted. People change, and she has changed. She's changed because she lost Haley and because she's blind. What is going on? I'm, Mom, I don't understand you. You were practically ready to leave Dad when you found out that Gina was going to move into this guest house. You are defending Gina now. I have done what I have done under the circumstances because I thought it was right for the family. All right? Now, I just want you to leave it alone, and I'll deal with your father. You, fine. Sorry for interrupting. Hi, honey. Hi. Uh, have you heard from Cousin Eden? I, I, no. I think they're still in Hawaii. Well, no, I, I called the hotel and they said they checked out four days ago. The manager said that they were on their way back up to Santa Barbara, but nobody's seen them. I'm worried. Well, they probably just changed their plans at the last minute. Don't you think they'd notify one of us? Well, maybe, maybe they came back. Maybe they don't want to be disturbed and they snuck into the beach house. I never thought about that. Well, I, I'm going to go check and I'm not going to bother them. I just want to well, make sure they're okay. I'd be too thrilled to see you if that's where they are, Carmen. Okay. Well, thanks a lot. Bye. 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 Hello, Carmen. Goodbye, Carmen. <clears throat> well, am I in the wrong house? Anybody gonna welcome me home? All right, freeze. Put your hands up. Get up. What? What are you? What are you guys doing here? You're supposed to be in Hawaii. Uh-huh. Aloha. Uh -huh. And we'd be happy to explain, Ken, if you put that gun down. Yeah. I was called because there were supposed to be prowlers up here. Oh, well. Well, I guess that's us. Yeah. What are you going to do to us? Well, I should turn you in, but I think I'll just welcome you home. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Right. Right. Julia, just soon. Something's not right. All right, both of you are going to be fine. We want to stay, Mason. Of course. You, you ought to be disbarred for what you let happen in the judge's chambers. It was unforgivable. Is winning all that important to you that it doesn't matter who gets hurt in the process? She better not lose that baby. caught me. Is that all right in your mind, Gina? That you lied to everybody equally? I just didn't want you to think it was anything. I don't give a damn about Keith. We're lovers. I care about why you didn't tell me when you knew what it would have meant to me. I felt for you more than anybody in the whole world. God, I feel so betrayed right now. I believed in you, Gina. I wouldn't listen to anything bad about you because I knew that you had changed. I felt that our love had changed you. It did. Well, obviously not enough. The lies in the past don't matter, Gina. That was before I met you. But this one, this one matters. This one counts. Don't you realize? You only saw the best of me. I wanted to keep it that way. Oh. Why can't you forgive me? Just give me another chance, please. It'll never happen again. You know again. something? You are like a little girl. You will say anything in order to get out of a tough spot. I know I was wrong. I should have told you right away. Well, then why didn't you? You know why. Because the woman you fell in love with was totally dependent on you. You... I thought if I changed one thing that, that everything would change, that you would stop loving me. You said that you wanted to take care of me, that you yes. liked it. Yes, I also said that I would love you whether you had your eyesight or not. You're so damn dishonest that you can't even conceive that I would be telling you the truth. Don't look at me like you hate me. 
I hate what you've done to us, Gina. You don't know how often I imagined how it would be the first time that you could see me. That you would be able to see how much love I had in my eyes for you. That you would never doubt me again. I never wanted to hurt you. Well, you did. I'm sorry. Scott, I am so sorry. Scott, I love you. It's not enough, Gina. Scott! Well, now, it's my turn to surprise you. I have someone that used to know you and you used to, she used to be here. I guess she got tired of waiting. Who was it? Never mind. Uh, that can wait. Why are you guys back here and why don't I know about it? And what were you doing in that room, 211? Um, well, to answer the last question, we were just doing some unfinished business, that's all. Yeah. You're not gonna tell me, are you? I can't, but suffice it to say that it has no effect on you or the last resort. All right, all right, but as long as the agency is doing the security for the hotel, I'd appreciate knowing next time so there aren't any accidents. You yeah. will. Promise. I would have thought when you guys got back from Hawaii that the last thing you'd want was more mystery, except maybe to figure out what your wedding presents were going to be. You haven't changed those plans, have you? Oh, right. no, not a chance. Uh, don't give him any ideas. He might change his mind. What, what wedding? <laughs> well, here's my surprise after all. I'm sorry. Hi. I had you in an error. That's OK. Catch your breath. Hi, Eden. Andrea? I don't believe it. <laughs> Uh, you had braces the last oh, time that I saw you. Oh, my goodness. God. It's so it great to great. see you. This is um, Chris Castillo. This is Andrea Bedford, former inmate of our boarding school. <laughs> hey. nice Hi, nice you. to meet yeah. you, Chris. Oh, what has it been, God. like 10 years oh, since I've seen easily. you? You were living in Europe with your mm -hmm. father. I, you know, I went to live there a few years ago. I tried looking you up, but I couldn't find you. Well, you know, we were never in one place for very long. But look, I'm really sorry I didn't keep in touch oh, with you. Oh, forget it. What are you, crazy? What are you doing in Santa Barbara? Well, I work with the NCA now, and I'm here to work on the oil spill. I see. Good for you. Yeah. How do you know Kane? Well, we met at the rescue mission on the beach. Uh, so hmm. what have you been doing? Oh, so. Well, I'm, I'm really happy that you got involved in the cleanup effort. Yeah, well, there's still a lot to do, and I'm every spare moment I've got away from the agency, I'm spinning over at the shelter, but uh, there's a lot to be done. And... With the new job, it's uh, it's a lot of hassle, but uh, somebody's got it. Why are you, why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> well, I'm just happy for you. That's all. I mean, uh, are you happy? she seems great. How did you know? Because it's written all over your face. <laughs> when I thought about you being married, I thought this woman is going to be married to a nobleman or a prince or something. No, 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 no. I am not married, nobly or otherwise. But I might be involved. I'm just, I'm not really sure yet. Well, you couldn't do better. Neither of you could. That's wonderful to see so you again. See you. Oh. We've got her stabilized. Oh, well, do you have any idea what's wrong? Yes, but I'd rather wait until I know for sure. It won't be long. Okay, uh, I'll be here. Okay. I asked Dr. Clark if the stress of the hearing could have brought this on. He said it wasn't likely. Oh, good. Do you feel better? Yeah, I do. Well, fine, then you could just pick up where you left off. That is, of course, if Rita and the baby pull through. But if not, well, what the heck? Dr. You Foster, at Dr. least won't have lost the case. And that would be the big tragedy here, wouldn't it? Obviously, you've cast me as the villain in this piece, no matter what the reality... Let me ask you one question, if I may, Mason. Do you care at all where that baby goes, or if it lives or dies, for that matter? Shut up. I've had about enough out of you, Julia. Contrary to what you might like to believe, you haven't cornered the market on emotional involvement. I care a great deal about what happens to that baby. I don't want to see it hurt, or any other child, for that matter. But I took the case on because I thought the baby would be better off with the Liptons in the first place. That doesn't mean I don't care about the mother, because I do. I'm not the automaton you'd like to believe I am. I have very deep feelings about what's been going on here. I want those feelings respected. I hope you understand that. I'm not going to put up with any more of your abuse. The lead about Harry being at the hotel would have panned out. Yeah, it'd be just the sort of irony he'd appreciate, you know, parking himself right under our noses. Maybe he's not in Santa Barbara. None of the hotels, none of the motels, none of the rental houses have any listing of a Harry Winslow. Hamilton Roberts, J. 
Jonathan Gear or Simon, um, oh, who was it? Uh, Simon Carson, but he is in Santa Barbara. He just must be using another alias. You know, I'm gonna miss operating underground. Yeah, well, don't get too hung up on this cloak and dagger stuff, because it's gonna end, and once it's over, we'll be uh, floating on back to our former simple life. Was our life ever simple? Wishful thinking. <laughs> you know, I think I'm gonna have to call my family and tell them I'm here. They must be wondering about me. Why don't you do that? Uh -huh. And please give them my love. And please don't mention anything that would... No, I wouldn't. I won't even hint what we're up to, but... What are we up to? I mean, where do we go from here? I don't have the slightest idea. I'm gonna have to spend a little time trying to figure that out now. Well, we're gonna find him. I know we will. Yeah. Yeah, we have to. Thank you, darling. <clears throat> well, you seem a little upset. Something Carmen said about evening cruise. Listen to me. Everything's going to be fine. Didn't they say they wanted to find the most romantic spot in the whole world to get married? It's a big world, baby. How are you? Huh? Look, uh, son, I'm uh, sorry we haven't had a chance to talk about. Haley's death, and I wish I could say something profound. I, I really can't. Uh, it's, it's a senseless kind of a thing. And I feel very helpless about it. Oh, I felt the same way. I, I'm finally coming to terms with it, though, Dad. Good. Sorry I wasn't at the uh, service. It was beautiful, darling. Well, Marie, uh, why don't you go back upstairs tell Brandon I'm here. Old Daddy's here. Brandon's not here right now, Cece. What's he doing? Boy Scouts, Cub Scouts? Playing tennis? What? That'll be fine, Marie. Thank you. Ah, uh, he's with Gina right now. It's not a usual visiting time, is it? Ah, uh, actually, he's living with Gina. He's living with Gina permanently. Some kind of a joke, Sophia? It's not a joke. Brandon missed her terribly. He wanted to live with her, and to tell you the truth, I felt a lot of pity for her when Haley died. She's lost her sight, she's lost Haley, she's lost everyone. Gina! <clears throat> Is Gina blind, deaf, or somewhat dumb? With or without family, she's never changed and she never will. Now, your soft heart's gotten in the way of your pure judgment, but we do have a legal agreement, thank heaven. I had it arranged through an attorney. Sophia, you cannot do that without my consent. Uh, somehow she signed him over to her dad. Then somehow she will unsign him over, and he can come back to his own bed tonight. Now, can he? You can't yank him around that way. How the hell can you turn him over to that creature? That defenseless boy with a woman who sells herself regularly to the highest bidder? Oh, Cece, for heaven's sake. She's a lot more stable now, and I did what I did for Brandon because I thought it was best for him. I thought it was best. Best for him. That's right. How dare you make that kind of decision without me? How dare you go behind my back this way? Brandon is my son. How could you just give him away? That's as out of hand as anything Gina's done to me. Dad, don't talk to her that Don't way. tell me what to do. Why didn't you stop her? Why didn't you talk her out of it? Don't you blame I... this on him. No, I don't blame him. <sighs> I blame you. Just you. Where are you going? I'm gonna get Brandon back. Hubby getting home. I don't know. He'll probably call. Oh. Well, and if not, what then? Uh, then I feed the baby, put him to bed, sit down, watch television, read a book, something like that. You need to be married for that? What are you saying, Mel? That Mason isn't home as often as I would like? Yes, I agree, but I imagine a lot of wives feel the same way. Yeah, and a lot of them are pretty unhappy. You know, sometimes where you can put your faith in the wrong person. The test is, are they really there for you when you need them? Mason is here for me when I need him, yes. He always will be. Look, I know we, we've had a lot of uh, trouble in our marriage, but I think we're stronger because of it. And as far as Mason being a typical husband, he will never be that, and I don't want him to be. But he's, he's very loyal toward me and the baby. Um, 
We're very important to him, not, not to mention the fact that he loves us very much. What, you don't agree? Victoria. Sweetheart, look, I'm on your side, okay? Whatever makes you happy is what I want for you. Well, good, because Mason makes me happy. Fine, then end of discussion. She has a condition called eclampsia. It's very serious. Her blood pressure is way up and she's been having seizures. We've got to stabilize right now, but it looks like we're gonna to have to perform an emergency cesarean immediately. Is the baby all right? Well, I'm not gonna try and fool you. At this point, it's about a one in four chance of survival. Oh my God. And if we don't operate right away, the chances are that neither one will make it. Oh, oh Julia. Dr. Clark told me they have to take the baby now. But if I'm not, if it's not gonna make it. Look, they're gonna do everything they can to save the baby, but they have to act now because you're both in danger. But I don't care what happens to me, Julia. This baby's got to live. She's got to. It's special somehow. I felt it from the beginning. And you have to promise me that you tell the doctor no matter what, he's got to save this baby, please. I'm, I'm afraid that that's not going to Oh, please don't hate me. Oh, no, we don't. We understand. You take the baby, okay? And I know you'll love it, and you'll be good parents. And maybe someday, maybe you can tell the baby about me. Excuse me, I think we better uh, take it to OR right now. Okay. I guess we all underestimated how much she loves that baby. Eden. Eden is uh, at her folks' house. You know, I just. Uh... Sorry, I guess I should have not. Where have you been? I, mean, I, I heard you were coming back to California four days ago and you never showed. I thought maybe you got lost in the Bermuda Triangle or something. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were keeping tabs on me. Uh, besides, the Bermuda Triangle is on the other side of the country. Come on, you know my geography. Besides, why are you hiding out? You're in some kind of danger, aren't you? Uh, there's nothing for you to worry about, believe me. Oh, great. I've heard that one before. I'm really worried. Well, I... I know you're on another case. So I am. It's, uh, it's a... I can't talk about it. It's important. So it's dangerous. Well, I can handle it. You know, I just got the drop on you, didn't oh, I? Come on, uh -huh. I'm not joking, Cruz. You've already been through too much. I don't want anything else to happen to you. It won't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Everything's gonna be okay. I promise. Ready? All right, Gina, where is he? See, see, he's not here. I told you he's out playing with a friend. Why don't you give me a call next time to see if it's convenient for you to visit him? You wretched woman. There won't be a next time. He's not staying here. I'm taking him home with me. I have legal papers. They're, they're right here. They were signed by your wife. Brandon is mine now. You can't get him back. If there's anything that I ever, ever do for that child is to get him away from you. Do you understand me? Stop yelling at Mommy. Leave her alone. Come on, son. Let's go home now, please. Huh? Let's no, go home. Daddy, I don't want to go there. I want to stay with Mommy. You belong with us, Brandon. You're part of our family. I don't like it there. All people do is yell and get mad at each other. And you're always busy and there's nobody to play with except the maids. Listen, son, I never knew you felt that way. Why don't we try to work things out, huh? We love you. I love you. No, you don't. Or you wouldn't keep making me go with you when I don't want it. You let me stay with my mommy. Out of the mouths of babes, Cece. So glad you're home. I'm so glad you're home. Oh, it feels good to be home. Hi, look who's back. Yeah. Hi. Ted. How are you doing? Good. Oh. Oh. Mm. So sorry to hear about Haley. Yeah, well. I know how much she loved you. Well, at least she knew I loved her at the end. Uh, how was Hawaii? Huh? It was great. It was beautiful. <laughs> 
We still haven't decided where we want to get married, but... Yeah, well, wherever it is, we'll all be there. You know that. Will we? <laughs> yeah. What is it? What's wrong? Um... What is it? Tell me. It's, it's, it's more than one thing. Uh, you, you heard about the oil spill, right? Yeah. Okay, um... Mason and Pamela are going to try and prove that... Dad has sabotaged the rig. But that's crazy. I know it is crazy, and it's tearing this whole family apart. Kelly's gone away without Jeffrey. Well, you don't mean that she's left him. No. No, I think... She, I think she just wanted to be alone for a while. Well, I can understand that. Well, what about you and Daddy? Are you all right? I think your father <clears throat> right now is probably angrier with me than he's ever been in his life. What happened? Uh, Eden, I gave Brandon to Gina permanently. Why? I can't, I can't explain it to you. Oh, Mama, I want to understand. I, you will I'm never just... understand. You, co you couldn't understand, so I just don't want to talk about it. I want some answers from you. And I want you to just leave me alone. Mama, Daddy, what is going on? Your mother's the only one who can answer that. Not much of a homecoming for you, but I am very glad to have you back. Welcome home, sweetheart. I think it's only fair of me to tell you that I've come to a decision. If Rita and the baby both come through this, I'm no longer going to be able to represent you. I'm going to have to withdraw from the case. But why, Mr. Caplow? Because I don't think I can do a good job any longer, and that's not fair to you. Well, why don't you let us decide that? No, I can't. I'm sorry. I've lost something that, for me, is essential to success in winning this case. And that is the certainty of the rightness of our position. Because of what Rita said? Yeah. So she was willing, even desperate, to give up her life for that of the babies. Now, to me, that indicates a bond between two souls that I don't really want to meddle with. But you've always reminded me that that child is as much mine as the mother's. I know, I know that. I believe that. And I don't mean to belittle your feelings at all. But there's a question that's been nagging at me. I, I don't want you to answer it. I just want you to think about it. What is it? Would either of you be willing to give up your life for that baby? Now, I'm not talking about a child that you've loved and cared for for months or even years. I'm talking about this baby right now at this point in time, before you know if it's a boy or a girl, before you even know if it's healthy or not. Would you be willing to die for it? Rita is. Now, I think you've, you've both gotten a raw deal. You're two of the more decent people I know. I, I think it's a shame that you've had to go through as much as you have. But I'm still recommending that you drop this suit. I'll see that the money is returned, even if I have to do it myself. But I honestly feel that the solution to this problem lies in the hearts of the people involved and not in the courts. That's why I'm asking you. No, I'm imploring you to reconsider your claim. For an explanation, your mother refused to give it to me. I really asked, Dad. You shouted and demanded. Maybe if you were more gentle with her. Well, I, I went down to that guest house with the intention of taking that document and tearing it up and throwing it in Gina's face and taking Brandon home, carrying him home if necessary. See, when push came to shove, I didn't do it, I couldn't do it. Why? Because he wants to be with her and I had to pay attention to that. If I forced him to come home with me, he would have hated me the rest of his life and I didn't want that. Well, Dad, maybe you can understand now why Mom agreed to give him up, and you can forgive her for that. Look, Ted, your mother may have had her reasons, but she deliberately left me out of the most important decision of our lives, one of them anyway. And I'm too angry to forgive her for that. Well, would you be so angry if she wasn't around anymore, if you could never talk to her? You know what, Dad? I think you are pretty darn lucky that you got a chance to make it up to her. Ted, come on. Don't do this. Look, son, I know... Uh, son... I know you're grieving and my heart goes out to you. This is not the same thing. Huh. Said, excuse me, I'm gonna rest for a while. Daddy. I love you. And I know you love Mama very much. 
you could just try to remember that. Glad you're back. This family just never gets a break, does it? No, it has. Um, should be falling apart more and more. I'm just afraid to see what's going to happen next. Maybe the bad times are over. Maybe things are going to get better. You've had too much pain in your life, Ted. Tell me about it. Did you know that uh, Haley tried to protect me when she got hit? You know that? And whenever I think about how much time we spent arguing with each other when we were together, and now I see Dad, I just wish I could make him understand how important it is to put all this past him. He knows. He'll come around. You'll see. I love the sea breeze. It's so cool and fresh. You know, as well as I thought I knew Eden when we were growing up, she turned out much differently than what I had expected. What did you expect? Never mind you, I mean, we were best friends, and she was great fun to get into trouble with, but I always thought she'd turn out to be a, a rich, spoiled debutante. You know, the kind that marries all the time, but never really settles down? Well, from what I hear, that's the way she was headed until she met Cruz. Oh, the love of a good man changed her. I wonder if that's really possible. What, that love can change a person? Mm hmm Oh, I think so. I've been waiting a long time for somebody to come along and change me. I thought you changed yourself. As much as I could. There's still something missing. Living alone, being self-sufficient just isn't enough. I want to share who I am, what I have with someone. I think it's time. That's saying too much, aren't I? No. Oh. Those, those are beautiful thoughts. Rita just gave birth to a five-pound, one-ounce little girl. Mm. And so far, she looks like she's going to do OK. Mm. Rita is in intensive care. She's a little tired, but it looks like she's going to do OK, too. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. OK. If you have any questions, I'll be around. Mm. Five pounds, that's little. I wonder if Rita has a name for the baby yet. I don't think that Rita... Why are you asking me that? Well, we're giving up our claim to the baby. Your words hit home, Mr. Capwell. We just couldn't live with ourselves if we took that baby from Rita now. It'd be cruel to both of them. Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't think it's a good idea for us to see Rita or the baby right now, but would you give her our love and tell her that we're praying for both of them? Of course I will. Thank you. Thanks. Bye, Mr. Capitol. Thank you. Thanks for everything. Sure. I hope you know what you said to the Liptons. I hope you know how much that means to me. I'm glad. Well, oh boy. Why do I get the idea you're about to tell me something I don't want to hear? I'm not going back to the firm. I really think that you and I need to go our separate ways. I'm not going to let you walk out of my life. Please don't make this any harder for me than it is. This isn't easy. And, I, and we just need to let it go because I, I don't want the disappointments anymore. Listen to me, Julia. I've been living a lie, and that's what has to end, not us. I love you, Julia. I'm going to tell Victoria that that my marriage to her is over. I love you, and I'm going to make it work. 
I promise you. I understand you're having some chest pains, Mrs. Peacock. I located it in my heart. I think it's broken. What are you doing here? Where's Mrs. Peacock? I gave them a fake name. It sounds like you. I have some real patients to attend. Scott, please. I'm a real patient, too. I need my eyes examined, you know? Well, then, then I'll send another doctor. No, I want you to do it, please. to the left. What happened to your bedside manner? Now to the right. Scott, don't give up on me. I was the best thing that ever happened to you. At least that's what you kept telling me. You didn't mind my flaws, even when I warned you about them. You said it made me more lovable, more exciting. It doesn't seem fair that you're turning your back on me when I took you at your word. Your eyes appear normal, Gina. Just stay out of direct sunlight and you should be fine. Scott, you're the best thing that ever happened to me, too. We were wonderful together. Don't throw it away. You threw it away, Gina. Will the real Harry Winslow wink? Hi. Hi. How's your family? Oh, could be better. What are these, uh... Yeah. Pictures of you as a child? No. Oh, no. Nice. Um, actually, that's from a package that uh, Richard had delivered a little while ago. Uh, hmm. What's it doing at your house? It's uh, kind of chaotic. I think I'd like to talk about it later, if you don't mind. Not if you don't. So who are these people? Well, those people are Harry. All of these are Harry? Yeah. Well, you couldn't even tell these are the same man. Yeah, these here are from different fake passports. Like I told you, the dude is truly a master. This is going to make our job a lot harder. <sighs> yeah, yeah, it is. What's the matter? Well, I've been thinking about our job, and uh, I've decided that I should take it alone from here on out. But you said that we're working together. Well, I know I did, but that was stupid of me. I always like being with you, and I don't like some of the things I'm going to have to do on this assignment, and I, uh, I don't know, I, get, I just figured it would make it bearable somehow. I put my blinders on and uh, pretended it made sense, but today I... Took those blinders off. It made sense to me. Eden, this is serious. I don't want to dance around it. I mean, for all the reasons we've already been over, I decided to take this job knowing full well that it may end up risking my life on some level. It's, it's almost a given. Well, I know about that. I mean, I've thought about that a lot. I just don't talk about it. Baby, I can't allow you to risk making the same kind of sacrifice. Losing you would be a sacrifice. You can't expect me to knowingly put you in this kind of danger. You know, I always thought if something bad were going to happen, it would be the best if we could have it happen to us together. Don't shut me out because you want to protect me, because that would kill me. Now, I think what we should do is we should figure out the best way that we can use these. What do you say? I feel like I could cry. What? You're so gentle. I guess I'm just not used to it anymore. You should always be treated gently. Well, I haven't always treated others that way. I haven't either. I'm not too proud of those times. I can't imagine you being any different than you are with me right now. It's such a luxury, you know? What is it? What, being alone? Well, that and, and just not being in a rush. Just taking time for whatever, to feel what I'm feeling right now. What are you feeling? About a million different things, really. Mainly just very, very close to you. I wish this moment could go on forever. 
Maybe you can. You know, as long as we're, um, bearing souls here, uh... What? I think I'm falling in love with you. Hey. That's a very romantic notion, the idea that you can't go on living without me. You know, I mean it. I couldn't and I wouldn't want to go on without you. And I know you feel the same way. Yeah, well, feelings are one thing. And taking a chance on throwing your life away is something else again. I am not throwing my life away. I know what's precious to me. You are precious to me. I want us to live our life together. What I am doing is making a... Uh, a statement of policy. I'm saying that whatever dilemmas you decide to get yourself into, I want to be involved. I'm not compromising. It goes the same for you, too, you know. This is a statement of policy, is that it? Yes. And I don't really think I need to make it after everything that we've been through. We've talked about this before. I don't know why you're wasting your time and energy, because you know you're going to lose. Oh, wait, I, ex wait a second, you know. Yeah? So, okay, I'm gonna lose. I'm gonna lose. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Oh, then I, I think we should disagree that we're gonna work together. What do you say? Aiden, um... Come on. You are so... bad. We will work <laughs> together under the condition that the dirty work will be mine and mine alone, all right? All right. Agreed. Now, back to business. I have a question. Do you think this plot against the president is going to happen soon? I don't know, but I do know that Harry would not be in Santa Barbara if he weren't already laying the groundwork. I see. Well, then we don't have much time. I think what we should do is try to figure out whether these pictures are going to be helpful or more confusing. Don't you think? I think we should Serious. take a break and put these little pictures to bed. And then you and me can, uh... Start fresh in the morning. Cruz. Yeah? Uh, just one more thing. What's that? Do you think you might be able to come over here and give me a big kiss? It's a long ways, Eden. I think we should meet, uh, halfway on this. I see. Um, does this have anything to do with our policy? Everything that ever happens between you and me has to do with our policy. You know, this looks to me to be about halfway. I think you should uh, come halfway. It's almost. This is halfway. It's early. Uh, I fed the baby. He's sleeping. I need to get off. Are you hungry? No, Victoria, I have something to tell you. It sounds serious. What is it? Well, something I should have said a long time ago. I, I uh, guess I didn't want to admit it, not even to myself. <laughs> Victoria, you know that, that when we met, I was at a low point in my life. I had recently lost Mary and the child she was carrying. I wasn't yet aware that I had conceived a child. With Julia, you needed a husband and a father for your baby. And I guess I needed to be needed. I, I welcomed the responsibility of, uh, of a family. But what I've come to realize is that I have a responsibility to myself as well. Uh, to be honest with myself about my feelings. 
And the truth is, the more I try to force myself into this role, the more difficult it becomes, and the less I want to try. So I, uh, I, I make more excuses. I, I become less available and less loving. I know that's... I know what that's like for you, Victoria, and I can't go on pretending to be your husband when I'm really not. I love Chip, but that's not enough. And I'm tired of denying what I, uh, I think you've suspected all along. That's that I'm in love with Julia. And I think I have been for a long time. I'm Tom Brokaw. A Florida town opens its arms and hearts to three children who have been exposed to AIDS. Tonight on NBC Nightly News.